As of recording, we are already halfway done with the Book of Boba Fett. And I have to say, it's no Mandalorian. If you haven't had the chance to watch the Disney Plus show yet, you're not missing anything. And also there won't be spoilers in case you want to waste some of your life away watching this show in the future. Boba Fett's back, baby! And I think he's as big of a joke now as he was in the original franchise. That's right. I'm not a Boba Fett stan. I, I never was one. I always thought he was a punchline, a joke. He's a background prop. He looks cool. He's got his badass voice, his sweet suit. But then he just gets his ass handed to him by Han Solo accidentally. He's like, oh, what's going on? He hits his backpack. Whoa! Spring! Hits the side of his ship, dies like a bitch in the Sarlacc pit. It's pathetic. And then he got a huge following. Why? Before you try to dislike the video but realize it's futile because YouTube disabled this ability. They might bring it back in the future and then I sound like a fool, but whatever, that's gonna happen either way. Know this, I wanted to give this show a chance. I really dig The Mandalorian, probably more than a lot of people. I enjoyed the hell out of it, especially season two. So going into this, I did have expectation. Jon Favre is attached to it again. We have some cool characters in the mix. It takes place on a familiar planet. We're on Tatooine with the spice and the, the blue milk and the band. You got the band in there with that blue elephant thing. Rito's probably in the background just waving to the camera like, hey, I'm here. I'm here too. So it's got the nostalgia at play. It's got even more than Mando does right out of the gates. We're also at Jabba's Palace. Remember Jabba's Palace? We're back there, baby. Because the entire plot revolves around Boba Fett becoming a crime lord, taking over where Jabba the Hutt failed. He's now seated on the throne. He's got a badass assassin working for him and upstaging him in every single instance. She's a strong female lead! And for Star Wars, it's about time. I don't even know why this show is called The Book of Boba Fett. First off, there's no book. Where's the fucking book that I'm reading from? Okay, I was expecting Frodo Beggins to open something up. It was a long time ago, and it was on Tatooine, and there was a stupid-ass, lame character named Boba Fett that people love for some reason, even though he's a complete joke. And he continues to be one. What, what is this voice? I don't know. But no, there's no book. And also Fennec, the, the badass female bounty hunter, she should be the star. She basically is. Every scene Boba Fett's in, he has to get his ass helped. Like... He's trying to fly away in the ship and he keeps running into walls and then there's Fennec out there just kicking ass and, and like, I'll take over dumbass, you just, just sit still, I'll handle it again. This guy's supposed to be like the greatest bounty hunter, no one gives a crap about him, no one seems threatened or scared of him. Why didn't they go John Wick style with it and have people like shudder and back and scurry into a corner when they see this dude. Just even the mention of his name makes people wet themselves. Even the most badass bounty hunter should be like, oh my god, it's, it's Boba Fett. Like, if you want to make this character something cool, then make him something cool. Don't continue to make him an idiot that's constantly being saved. He gets trained by the Sand Riders. What? Why? What? Why does he need to learn how to fight? The guy's like 60. He should know it by now. He's been traversing the galaxy for most of his life. You would think he picked up a few tricks. The way the story is presented is also bizarre. We keep jumping back to him in a vat because he had acid sprayed on him from the Sarlacc that he burned his way out of in like two minutes. A scene that should have been epic and could have taken a whole episode to tell He's done in like 30 seconds. He's just like, I'm out, I'm done. So the story constantly juggles between what's happening in the present and how he got to the point where he took over the throne. Why it's not just straight up presented chronologically, I, I don't know. I mean, the story doesn't get anything for being out of order. There's no puzzle pieces that fit into place later and you're like, Whoa, that's such a cool reveal. That's how this happened. No, it's just very straightforward all the way through. I think it's the fourth episode, but at one point he chases around a robotic rat catcher who's about yay tall 
and he's a total dumbass. It's like, and he's like crawling through things and not and throwing pots and pans. And Boba Fett's like, oh, I can barely move in this stupid costume and I can't even bend down or like do anything. Uh, Fennec, do something cool and stop this thing. I can't do shit. I'm Boba Fett. World's greatest bounty hunter. Subscribe. It's not the worst thing ever though. I know I'm being very critical up front. The cinematography is still very well done. I like that there's practical effects. Some of the characters are really fun. The aliens, they're, they're puppeteered. They, they, they look solid, they look real. Not the fake CG shit, which there's plenty of that too. But for the most part, it does have the Mando look, which I liked a lot. There are some cool action sequences and high speed chases. There are also some bad ones, some embarrassing ones. Uh, we move past those though, thankfully, pretty quick, and we go on to the next thing. The music is not great either. The Mandalorian has that awesome soundtrack. Bum, 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 bum. I'm singing that crap constantly. I'm in the shower. Dun, 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 dun. I need a haircut, I, I recognize. They didn't even try with Book of Boba Fett. It's like. That's nothing. When the Mandalorian season comes out, it's a family event. My wife, daughter, myself, my son, we all watch the first two seasons. When Boba Fett episodes come out, it's just me and the boy. And he doesn't even have much interest in it. He's doing it because he just, he'll watch grass on TV grow. That's that's how obsessed he is with television. We, we really have to monitor it. It's, it's dangerous. It's a dangerous game. We'll watch it and we're just kind of numb to it all. And I think the only reason we're even advancing on the show is because we do love The Mandalorian so much that it's like, I feel bad if I don't at least finish this season. We maybe not have to do any more afterwards, but maybe there's some trick up the sleeve for the second half, because the first one, man, that magic is missing. I'd love to know your thoughts on the book of Boba Fett in the comments below. Let me know if I'm off on this. Is the show actually really good and I'm just not seeing things clearly? Or am I right and the show is getting progressively worse with each episode and is a massive letdown? Only time will tell, but let me know what you think. Like the video if you had a good time, subscribe if you haven't, I post movie content all the time, and hopefully I'll see you around. And also, why is his helmet off all the time? He never wears the damn helmet! Put it on! Ba -bum -bum -bum. Oh, you're still here. I'm just gonna keep singing for a little bit while you think about looking at other videos on the channel, maybe subscribe if you haven't, or join me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Or hit the join button right here on YouTube. Dun 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 dun. Bum 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 bum.